Torsten, come on up. Come on up. Guys, could you give it up for Torsten from Amazon Web Services? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. So, tell us, uh, why did you guys get involved with this, and what has the last two, three days looked like for you? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me. When Amazon.com was founded nearly over 20 years ago, it was based on the belief that customer obsession, rapid innovation, and long-term thinking is the key to success. The last two days here at Bits and Pretzels, I talked to many bright and passionate founders who were obsessed to solve specific problems of their future customers. With Amazon Web Services, we provide these founders with exactly the technology to do that to build products and services to deliver highly innovative solutions for their customers. On a global scale, literally within days, with just a handful of developers, these teams, these are the new builders. It's an honor for me to gift 30K, $30,000 worth of AWS credits to these founders, to each, to each finalist, to provide their teams with the possibility to use the latest and most advanced cloud technologies like AWS Lambda for serverless computing or AI services for image recognition to build new solutions for their customers. Today, within these hours, one of the team will get the big trophy. And all six teams, they are winners already. So please, join me and give them a big applause. They are our stars today. Thank you. Yeah, do you want to grab a seat? Okay. So I'm going to stand over here, and we're going to make this a little bit like a fashion show. I am going to read out the amazing, uh, I mean, these guys have worked, their, their portfolios are incredible. So what's going to happen is I'm going to introduce each of the jury members. They're going to come, they're going to wave, maybe do a little twirl or something, and then they're going to join on the seat over here. You guys ready backstage? Fantastic. All right, here we go. First up. He is the head of our jury. You can play, we can clap. It's Andreas Etten, the founding partner of 10X, serial entrepreneur investing in founder teams throughout Europe and the US. He's built six companies himself. He's a partner with over 100 investments in marketplaces, SaaS businesses, digital services. He was the first investor in a bunch of incredible startups. You'll know he's a former professional sailor and now a kite surfer. We've got questions for you. But let's keep the class going for Dr. Christian Sala, please come on up. Guys, can we clap for him? General partner at Holtzbrink Ventures. He's an entrepreneur himself. He co-founded the flight search company Swoodoo, which was brought, which was bought by the international market leader Kayak.com. Managing director partner for Europe for Kayak until its IPO and sale to Priceline for $2 billion. He's got offices in Munich and Berlin with more than 750 million euro under management. He's certainly one of the people that did not go whoop whoop when I said investors yesterday. All right, next up, can we put our hands together for the partner of Speed Invest, Barry Helen, please. Come on up, thank you so much. She's got a telecom background, developed and led a 500 million euro company. Since 2014, she's been a partner at Speed Invest, and she's particularly concerned about women in tech startups. She is a seed stage venture in Europe. The topics that interest her are deep tech and industry, marketplaces, fintech. Some of her portfolio include WeFox, Bitmovin, Playbrush, which you'll hear from, Spock, and a few others. All right, time to start clapping again. For the partner at Early Bird, it's Hendrik Brandes. Come on up. His focus is digital technology fund. He's a passionate engineer and also a former world champion sailor. That seems to be a uh, theme here in this group. His focus digital tech and through a separate fund, Health Tech, with more than 120 investments to date. The portfolio includes One Football, Peak Games, Movinga, N26, Shapeshift, and a whole bunch of others. All right, next up, a man with my own name, founding partner Cherry, it's Daniel Glasner. <laughs> 
So his main interest is prop tech, fintech, travel tech, in general, online to offline business and marketplaces. He's the founder of Quandu, a SaaS company for restaurants, and co-founder of City Deal, which was sold to Groupon. Um, their tagline and cherries were founders first and investors second. We're gonna talk about that later. Proceed and seed stage across Europe. His investment por portfolio include Auto One, Flixbus, Lasara, Karubi, and a bunch of others too as well. Next up, from Balderton Capital, is a partner, Rob Mohan. He joined Balderton in 2009. He became the partner in 2015. He's a board director with over five portfolio companies. His focus sector is fintech, insurance, retail. He's a marketing expert. His main sector is, if any of you are in the SaaS, mobile, consumer, fintech space, that's the guy to talk to. His portfolio companies include The Hut, Cobalt Music, and Contentful. Next up, we have got the principal for Index Ventures is Dr. Philip Hartman. He's a multi-stage technology investor with a focus in the DAC region and B2B software and fintech. He previously ran product and design at Raisin. He's got 160 companies in the portfolio across 24 countries. His companies, some of you will recognize, Deliveroo, Slack, Dropbox, and others. And I think the last one, because we got one more chair here, so make sure you clap real hard. He is the investment manager of North Zone. It's Christopher. So he joined North Zone in 2016. He earned his stripes as a company builder through founding, scaling, and exiting London-based restaurant bookings app Uncover. His sectors of interest include marketplace and B2B SaaS when he's not investing. He kite surfs. Who else kite surfs in this group? Oh, here, here we go. Fewer kite surfing people. He's a European VC fund with a transatlantic Atlanta. That's the first time I have not said a word properly in two days. I'm clearly getting tired. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Transatlantic Edge and 21 years history backing Europe's leading investors. He's an early investor in the likes of Spotify, Lasara, Lemon Cat, Personio, and a few others that we're going to be talking about later today. Okay, I've got some questions for you guys. What has made things really, really great for me is you haven't sat in order. So, um, <laughs> we're going to guess who you guys are. <laughs> we discuss this. You said, no, I'm just kidding. All right, this is our fine jury. They have been committed so many hours to listening to the startups, and we're going to announce the winners of the startups. Before that, just so you guys have a sense of who these guys are. Andreas, question for you first. Sorry? Oh, here we go. They need mics. Okay. Just project. And so we got now. We got a mic. All right, super. It's working, yes. It is working. Andreas, key question. You have got over 100 investments out there. Where does all the money come from for this fund? Well, trafficking like Escobar, right? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we, start, to be honest, we started very small um, when founders approached us uh, because we were doing our own business pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were very lucky with our first investment in Brands for Friends in 2007, okay. uh, which we exited only four years later. And then we took the proceeds and kept on investing in uh, early stage startups because we thought we can generate value for the founders. Okay. And since then we have had 13 exits, quite substantial sum. And uh, we keep on investing into good, cool founders. And as we are free to do so with our own money, we, we continue to do it because we simply love it. Amazing. We love to support young founders. Thank you so much. And thanks for being an amazing partner and sponsor of this event in large as well, and for being the head of the jury. Well, I think we need to thank the three founders of, or the four by now. That's right. Oops. It's a great event, <laughs> right? <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Christian, question to you next. You've got a panel of people here. The question is for any entrepreneurs in the room, why should they go with you and not with the rest? <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, I think everyone here is representing great funds. So really, if you're a founder and you have the choice to, to, be, uh, to, to work with more than one of these funds, you're in a very lucky position. Um, as you said before, I was an entrepreneur myself, and if I was founding a company again, there would be two things I would be looking for when I was looking for my VC. One is whether the VC understands the business I'm doing, and secondly, whether the VC has any experience in building really big companies. And our fund, we've been around for 17 years. We've invested in 
more than 200 digital businesses. So we do understand a little bit about how to build digital companies. And on the other hand, we've been involved in six unicorns, so companies that have a, a value of more than a billion. So I think we also understand a little bit about how to build big companies. Amazing. Thank you so much, and thanks for being here. Question to you next. So um, you talked, uh, uh, we talked about the funds and why they should go with you, but I'm curious, who do you think would be relevant for your fund? Well, um, Speedinvest has a very strong operational support component, so besides the capital investment. And um, of course, a lot of um, investors and VCs are claiming that uh, for themselves as well. Speedinvest has a special model for that. So what we do is we define very clear deliverables, actually, and targets that we as Speedinvest partners have to um, deliver. And uh, there is some equity bound to that. So we are highly incentivized to really run for you and spend the time for the portfolio companies to succeed. And uh, we do that also um, by, for example, helping in the expansion to the U.S. market, as we have three partners uh, that help e EU or European tech founders in their step to the U.S. So we have a slogan for that, and that's uh, Speed Invest Works. Thank oh, you. I like that. Hendrik, we're going to go to you next. One plus one equals three. Explain that formula to me. Yeah, I think I heard it on stage before. Um, it was said, is it about corporate or startup? And it was said, no, it's about corporate and startup. I think this is very right. In times of democratization of innovation, it is increasingly likely that fundamental disruption comes from the crowd, not from the R&D departments of big corporations. On the other hand side, big corporations have unparalleled infrastructures to quickly scale uh, digital businesses. And I think it should be a prominent role of good VCs uh, to, to, to really shape the best symbiotic partnerships from both ends. And I think that is really a good formula to quickly build huge businesses. And I think we at Early Bird believe very much in that, and therefore we try to professionalize as much as we can. We have big partners uh, and big corporations, uh, which we have a network of corporations which we have built up since five, six years uh, in basically every industry to help startups to really scale quickly. Thank you. Daniel, one of your slogans is founders first, investors second. What does that mean, founders first? Well, so first of all, um, we have been founders ourselves. Uh, me and my two partners, we have been starting, um, building and exiting large companies ourselves. And with Cherry Ventures, we created the fund that we wanted to have as an investor in our companies back then. Um, that means for us, Cherry um, gives hands-on operational support by people that have been operators. Um, Cherry is run by people um, that know how to build large companies from scratch. And um, kind of first of and most importantly, um, we put founders' interest first. And that means also we put founders' interest before our own interest and before the interest um, even of our investors. Okay, thank you so much. Rob, we're going to go to you next. Talk to us about the importance of experience. I'm going to try to make this sound different to what has gone before. This is going to be tough. So at Balderton, uh, we have two partners who, as CEOs, built billion-dollar public software companies. Uh, and as investors, we have invested in um, half a dozen companies that have gone through that liquidity process. What is more important is what we do when things go badly and how we anticipate things going wrong. Uh, and that's what our 17 years of expensive uh, mistakes and many mistakes has taught us. Uh, and that is why I think when you talk to a VC, Go off and talk to the investors, uh, sorry, the entrepreneurs they backed before where things didn't go well and ask them, was that VC helpful? That's really good. That's good advice. And we're going to go to you, Philip, next. Uh, you're considered a European investor, but half your portfolio is also in the US. So talk to us about that, please. Yes, yeah, so um, absolutely right. So um, actually, it's not only like half of our portfolio that's in the US, but it's uh, also, like uh, around 50% of our team is based out of our offices in downtown San Francisco. And I think that puts us at Index Ventures into like a fairly unique position to really like uh, work with our portfolio companies from day one um, across the Atlantic. Um, however, it's important to know that we at Index Ventures, like we really want to team up with the most ambitious and most passionate entrepreneurs, irrespective of where they are, um, as we believe that the best in, uh, ideas can pretty much emerge anywhere. 
Excellent. And finally, last question, Christopher, for you. Think global, act local. What does that mean? Um, yeah, that's, that's actually not about climate change, where I actually <laughs> stole that uh, um, uh, phrase. It's, uh, it's more about actually how we believe like companies, successful companies are built today. Uh, many of the successful businesses that we see are started with a very like global mindset from the get-go, but then executed on like a very local level in different countries. And our firm, North Zone, very much like aligned our DNA with that approach. And we have a very global footprint as a company, offices in New York, Oslo, Stockholm, and London, from which we can support our entrepreneurs locally to fulfill their global vision. And we have done so with like a bunch of really big companies today, like Spotify, which we backed in the Series A, like Trustpilot, who started in Copenhagen, now relocated their HQ to New York uh, and the US, which is their biggest market, or more locally, Personio, uh, which is our Munich-based local hero, um, which despite their very short history, they are already working with several cl clients across the European uh, Union. And a quick shout out here, if anybody in the audience still is looking for a kick-ass uh, HR SaaS tool, these are the guys to work with. <laughs> um, and, and I'm going to end on that note. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks so much. You can hold on to that mic. Guys, can we give a hand to the jury, please? <laughs> Torsten, do you want to join me on stage? What we're going to do right now is um, Hannah uh, has been working on the startup stage over there. Torsten obviously has an amazing prize to give. Hannah, can you come up real quick? Guys, let's give a hand to Hannah, please. So for those who don't know, Hannah's been out there working with the startups, working with the founders, trying to get this competition going. And now we've got it. The winners across six verticals. So what's going to happen is um, we should get a check. Yeah, where are the checks? It's a surprise. The checks are coming. I'm going to stand here. Uh -huh. It's a lot of money. I mean, we can't lie. That's a lot of money. All right. So. What we're going to do is maybe I'll stand on this side. And as I, as I announce the winners, uh, if you would come and maybe come over there. Is that a good spot for you, Dan? Perfect. And you can hand over the check. I'll be ready. We've got six awards to give. The first one is for the winner of Commerce and Marketplaces Clusters. Guys, please put your hands together for Franzi from Catchies. your moments. <laughs> Next up, the winner of Mobility and Transportation Cluster, we got Tim from Fleetster. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the winner of Entertainment and Lifestyle Cluster is Alex from Teamster. The winner of hardware and the IoT cluster is Philip from Blake. And we get the photo. Lovely. One second. My worst. Perfect. I just need to make sure I get the pronunciation right. The winner of services and intelligence cluster is Anna from Nyris. <laughs> and the winner of banking and the insurance cluster, <laughs> we're already showing it to everyone. There we go, hide it. It's Stefan from FinCompare. <laughs> a 
And now we're going to do the most ambitious thing that's been done on stage so far. We're going to see if we can get a massive group photo. So if all the startups and, can, and founders can come up here with your checks, if the jury can come up here and Dan, you direct this and tell us what you want. Let's move in real close. Excellent. Okay, jury, you're taking a seat down there, please. Jury, you're taking a seat down there. Founders, you can give the checks to somebody. And musicians, play us something really sweet while we move things around. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so just so everybody knows what's about to happen, you are here to see the ultimate final pitch battle. It is going to happen on the stage, not just to a bunch of very friendly but slightly intimidating prospective investors, but to a room full of people. This is incredible as a support mechanism for these guys. So what I'm going to ask and request is when they come up, they will stand on this beautiful mark. They left three minutes not just to pitch their business, but to pitch their entire life and the future of whether their parents approve of them or not, right here on this stage. And then we're going to be followed by two minutes of questions. You guys have a mic? You've got mics over there. Two minutes of Q&A, and we're going to do that six times for six different clusters, all to find the ultimate winner. Massive prize, massive opportunity, massive future. So I know these guys are ready. I'm curious if you guys are ready. The question is, are you guys ready? Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm just going to do it one more time, and we're going to see how we feel. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Amazing. OK, so first up, Franzi, come join me over here. There is your mark. She's so far the winner of the Commerce and Marketplace cluster. You got three minutes. Are you ready? I am, yes. Three minutes. The stage is yours. you have a mic for me? Oh, yeah, we should get you a mic. By the way. Here we go. How's I mean, that? My voice is quite loud, but I guess. Okay, here we go. Three Can you minutes. all hear me? Fantastic. Uh, uh, clicker? clicker? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can do this without slides, but. Here we go. We'll, we'll get a clicker. No, we should just do a little dancing song. Now we got the clicker. Here we go. That's Thank the bad so part about being the first. <laughs> I'm glad you're showing us so much grace, though. So here we go. That still doesn't give you extra time. The green button is yours. You still got three minutes. There's your clock. There's your spot. But I can walk around a bit, right? A little bit. OK, perfect. <laughs> here we go. Three <laughs> minutes on the clock. Here we go. So hi, everybody. Super amazing to be here. My name is Franzi. I'm one of the founders of Catchies.com. Catchies is a meetup platform for secondhand and off-price products. So we list the whole range from fashion to interior. What they all have in common, they are up to 80% discounted. We have all the key players signed as paying partners. And um, we just started in 2016, last March. So let's take a look at the market, because then it becomes quite obvious why a meter in this industry is super critical. It's not only because of size. We are talking about at least a $15 billion market in 2016. It's also because it's highly fragmented. So there are hundreds of players spread all over the place, but they all have, and this is a second really important point, 
they all have limited supply. So talking about second hand, every item is unique. It's usually put online by a private seller and it's only there in one size, one color, etc. Third aspect is pricing. So prices can vary up to 50% for completely similar, similar products. And having all these products on one platform makes it transparent, the user can compare, and he can definitely catch the bargain he wants. And this is exactly where Catchies comes into the game. We cover all these shops on one site, but this is only one part of the story. So I already told you about our meter approach. And let me tell you, this is already a cash cow. So we started last year, March, as I said. Last month, we already had 700K unique visits. We generated 500K GMV for our partners in August only. And we achieved all this, and this was always super important for us, having profitable unit economics. So it's really a cash cow and it's even getting better because our profit margin per click out increases month over month. But there's also the right part and this is our shop solution. So we offer professional sellers the option to create their very own website within minutes, upload hundreds of products and the best thing, they are immediately co-listed on Catchy's The Meter and they get traction right from the start without them doing any marketing. We, on the other hand, get 20% for every item that is sold. And I would finish like by combining these two models, the meter as a traffic and content provider, and on the other hand, the shop solution for the professionals, this will definitely revolutionize the way secondhand products are sold. And we would be happy if you join us on this journey. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> Stay right here. So what is important is not just saying you're a cash cow, but being able to demonstrate. The question is, does the jury think that you are right on that? So let's go to them. It's on, don't worry about it. Yeah. First great pitch. Thank you. Thank you. So what's the, uh, what I'm wondering is why would big marketplaces, not the small ones, but the big, still go on a meta platform mm -hmm. um, like yours and pay for that rather than invest this money into own online um, advertising or Google AdWords? That's a really good question. And uh, let me tell you, like, we have all big players signed. We have a direct contract and they all pay by click. And they, most of them are with us since the very beginning. Why do they do that? Because usually they pay much more for customer acquisition on other channels like SEA, etc. So we are a much better channel for them to get really good traffic. We have high conversion rates, much better than any other channel. And we have very high AOVs. And when I mean high AOV, it's around 300 to 350 euro average basket. This is also why many of the big players, they put away a huge of their amount of their budget and put it on catchies. So they shift the budget to us because the conversions are better. Rob. Just a quick question. We have a number of investments in this sector. It's very hard to match. There's a real data issue here. How do you do the matching of items across different sellers? First of all, we build a specific crawlers that deal with different characteristics and they can automatically put all the different products that are, that are quite similar, they can put it in a similar category on our website. Because usually second-hand shops, they have different categories, completely different names, and it's hard to match them. But we have created an algorithm that is matching exactly the products for the specific categories on our meter. And really quickly, one last question. I think, sorry, is it working? Yep. Okay. I think it's all about scale. So um, what is the share of second-hand shop you have yet signed up and how many uh, partners can you sign up per week, per month or whatever? I mean, for the moment we have 135 shops already. So that's already quite uh, a huge amount. And I need to tell you, we are just in Germany for the moment. So we will start the English website end of October. And if you take a look at the other markets like UK, US, etc., this is, is incredible. I mean, Germany is one of the smaller markets in terms of second hand if you compare it to others. And we already managed to, to do the revenues we do now only in Germany. Super. Thank you so much. Guys, can we put our hands together for Franzi, please? <laughs> and let's give those to Tim. And the clicker. Tim. Yes, please. 
You ready? Absolutely. Tim is the founder of Fleetster. You've got three minutes on the clock, starting right now. Thank you. Hey, I'm Tim, and I would like music, but also to convince you that a mobility platform is, from what I think, the only way to win the big game in mobility. And how we started was with our Tesla Roadster after management consulting and investment banking. I was actually at the point where I said, we now need to do something with electric cars. So I convinced my former boss at the management consultancy to say, we need one of the first Tesla Roadsters in Europe, and I want to do events with those, and I want to meet all the people that think about mobility at this point. And so we did. We had one one of the first cars and I had senior management executives from all over the world with automotive industry or background driving Tesla with me for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and we exchanged ideas and we made actually quite good money with it. And that money I then invested into our first software, a corporate car sharing software for electric cars to be integrated into fleets. Our big problem back then in 2012 was we were way too early for the market. There were not enough electric cars. So we iterated, we made it bigger, we actually made it for all cars, but still, the hockey stick wasn't about to come. It was too slow for us, we wanted more. So we said, why actually going with this one product? Let's think back for a second. Any market that you think about when it comes to digital mobility products is actually a billion euro dollar market annually. So why going for corporate car sharing alone? And we didn't really know if there was any better use case out there like rental or public car sharing that was very close. So we said we are not sure about those. So why actually going further down and deep why not go wide? And that is exactly what we did. So we actually built our connected car service platform where we integrated into 13 different car producers. So we can now open, close doors, data from cars flow into our system from 30 different parties. We made it completely white label ready. So you can actually, you don't see that it's our software that some of you guys right here now have apps from car manufacturers in their pocket and you think it's them, but it's not. Because our approach, actually do I get a right time here at one point? Or do I have infinite time? Right, so our approach is to say, um, we actually don't try to take the market from the big manufacturers, we're actually supporting them when it comes to digital products. And then, now comes the big difference. Now the market is ready. Now mobility is super hot and we are ready. And we didn't only use our time to build that platform, we actually built additional use cases upon it. So we now have logistics, public car sharing, rental, all of those are somewhere ranking between prototype and already live with some, with some customers in the markets. I'm completely timeless, am I not? Right. Anyway, um, but I'm, I should be good in time. I practiced this so many times. So. Now comes the difference. We want to make you strong. We are out there and actually we can be your mobility platform right now. So come join us and thank you very much for the stage. Thank you. That was me. So we're just, uh, we're just playing around with different stuff. I know you guys could see the clock. So the clock was up there, it wasn't over here. But thank you for sticking to the time. And it will May be here I next time. May I gain back those 10 seconds and say one last sentence? 10 seconds, here we go. The one point that's very important is we don't need to expand globally. We actually want to stay locally, do software, and you can go global with our mobility products. Uh, that's good. You yeah, got it in 10 seconds. Good. That was amazing. Thank you. That, that timer sounds like 24. If you ever watched 24, that's what it sounds like. OK, um, jury, questions? Um, thanks for your pitch. Um, how do you actually make money? We license our software. So you, any of these use cases, we charge either by car under management or by transaction. So whatever is the success factor of our partner, for rental, it's transaction, because a rental makes money. And for car sharing, it's the organization of cars. So that means we make money when you share your cars. So depending on that, we have a fee per month per car, and that's what we make money with. Yep. It sounds like you have a lot of different products and services. So how do you manage? as a startup to, to keep the focus and to provide great service for all of the products? Um, we have absolutely standardized how we build our modules. So we can build our software very easily and everything that we build is actually in one core product. So we don't build silos, we all have them in one big platform. And we get focused by being totally design driven. So all products we, we attack effectively, we start from a design thinking process so our customers know exactly what to get and we know exactly what we are going to do. So it's actually not too difficult to transition between the different use cases if you are design driven. Last question. I haven't really understood which pain exactly you address. 
people in the future don't only want cars. Right now, they are asking for digital assistance. They don't want to take their car to a garage. They want somebody to pick it up. They want packages to be delivered overnight from Amazon into their cars. They actually want to make money with their cars when they are not using them. And we are providing the digital platform to do all of those services, but then for big car manufacturers that are live right now to make it in their name. Tim, thank you so much, my man. Thank Appreciate you. it. If you'd pass the mic and that to Alex. Can we give a hand to Tim, please? Oh, okay. Thank you so much. OK, so Alex, there's your clock, three thank minutes. You. We do have that now. You got the mic, you got the clicker. Yes, Are I you have. ready? Hope so. All right, three minutes on the clock starts right now. Perfect, thank you. Can I see some hands? Who likes football? Yes, perfect. So let's start with the bigger picture first, right? What's happening in the online sports industry? Number one, we're all hyper-connected. We build social communities and we are constantly mobile. Number two, we are short-term oriented. We don't want to be stuck into season-long commitments anymore and really yearly contracts don't work for us anymore. And number three, we want instant thrill, right? We want live experience and we want to have skin in the game. Okay, but looking at the markets really in football, there's no product out there that really caters those needs. That is essentially why we built Teamster. Now, Teamster is the most, uh, most engaging and most exciting fantasy sports platform in the world. Exciting means that you play for cash. Engaging means that we build an online community and pair that with a true live soccer gaming experience. How does it work? You create, a, you create an account on Teamster, you upload cash onto your account, you then join one of the weekly paid contests, like a two euro buy-in. We take 10, of, uh, 10 to 20% share as a service charge and the rest goes into a prize pool. You then draft your dream team consisting of real Bundesliga athletes like Thomas Müller. Thomas Müller, in turn, gets points for real-life actions in the Bundesliga matches, like if he scores a goal, you get four points. That's all happening live. So you constantly see yourself and your friends in the live ranking. And after the match is over, after the match day is over, you know exactly whether you want cash back. Now, we're not looking into a small market here, as we've just seen, right? There's an estimated 25 million user potential alone in Europe, which is equal to about 2 billion service charge. That is where we want to go to, but we are obviously a relatively young startup, so we launched last season. Uh, we're proud that we've um, built both our apps on a, a scalable infrastructure, and we launched the first social gaming features, really. But we're the first mover in what's called daily or weekly fantasy sports in Germany, and we're the first mover for cash game of skill in soccer in Germany. We're proud that we've built a strong team, two investment rounds with great investors and uh, great coaches like the CEO of Sky. We've been through two accelerator programs, but what's most important, we've been able to attract 110,000 users with a really small budget to join our cause at great activity levels to revolutionize the way we experience fantasy sports. That said, as we've just launched our game of skill for cash this season, we also see the first money dropping in. So thank you, and I thoroughly invite you to join us as a user to play teams and revolutionize the way we do online sports. Thank you so much. Thanks. Come over here. Come over here. <coughs> I was moving too much, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jury. Rob, do you want to take it? Who's, oh, sorry. We've got a mic here. Go for it. So fantasy sports has been a big thing in the U.S. for a long time, but as far as I know, it has never been a really big thing in Europe. So why do you think this is changing now? <laughs> so let me differentiate the question real quick. So fantasy sports as a season-long industry in Europe is about 40 million uh, active playing users big. In Germany there's, for instance, Comunio. In actually in the UK there's a 3.5 million users in Barclays seasonal uh, fantasy gaming. On the other hand, you have a valid sports betting industry. What has not happened yet is to find the mix between sports betting and season-long commitment. And this is exactly where we go into. This is exactly why we want to provide a social game of skill with a cash component. We'll go to you, Rob. And the other argument for that is, in the US, betting on sports is illegal. And that is why people are willing to bet real money on fantasy sport. 
in the UK, you can bet on any sport you like at any time. So wh why bother putting real money on these fantasy leagues? Well, essentially what you see is, and, and this is coming from a very private and personal perspective as well, if you take a look at, at, the, um, at the seasonal fantasy sports industry, what you often see, especially for World Cup and for European Championships, etc., that people play for cash on a private basis. So essentially there's, there's a tendency already to put a skin in the game and to have the thrill. Now what we haven't seen is somebody actually institutionalizing that. And this is where we come in. Last question. I like your game uh, mechanism. Uh, I tried it out, it's really good. Uh, however, um, like in all online games, there are certain cycles going on. So um, I foresee uh, a rise and a decline afterwards. So what's next? Good. That's fantastic. So essentially, at the moment, obviously, we have a relatively basic uh, gaming, uh, gaming mechanism. What's going to happen next is we are going to foster a social gaming community within our own teams the network so that we can drive stickiness and drive um, so to say local private um, contests if you will that happen both online and offline because that's the beauty of it thank Super. you guys can you put our hands together please for alex <laughs> It is actually really hot here, and these investors are not making it any cooler. My makeup person there is going, Daniel looking shiny already, like there's some serious heat over here. Philip, you're up next. All right. Are you ready? I guess so. <laughs> you got the clock here, we got the lights. This is Philip from Blick, three minutes on the spot right now. Hi, everybody. I'm Philip, I'm from Blick, and we offer real-time information about all goods inside of the supply chain. So what we figured out is that warehouse managers have huge problems nowadays, huge challenges nowadays, because of the fast-paced logistics market. So, well, whenever he wants to know something about his warehouse, about his supply chain, he has to rely on barcode scans. Those are still highly manual, um, labor-intensive, and in the end, also prone to lots of errors. So in the end, up to 40% of all items get misplaced and even lost in the supply chain throughout uh, one, one circle of, of a good. So there are other technologies out there, um, uh, modern technologies that try to solve the problem. Um, problem though is they just try, uh, try to bypass the manual labor. So it's really expensive but still not very reliable uh, at the same time. So what we offer is a system that tracks all goods inside of warehouses, but also in, inside of the entire supply chain in real time. Um, so how we do it, first we attach active sensor units to load carriers, such as mesh boxes to pallets, to load small load car carriers and so on. Second, these sensor units then tell in real time broadcast where they are and which condition they are and then Third step, we can bring all of this information, all of these insights to our customers via a web application, but also via an open API. So they can still use their business intelligence tools and have, by the snap of a finger, a digital copy of the entire supply chain. So this platform enables them to do live analytics in real time, but also do predictions about the future. So, um, we're very happy that we have a customer from the beginning on uh, with BMW on, on, on the strong side. So, from December on, we did several different paid pilot projects. Um, currently, we focus on a project where we outfit 200 load carriers inside of the facility in Dingolfing. Um, and according to our first customer, he has a savings potential of 10 million euro per location per year just using our technology. Beyond uh, this first customer, we also work together with Volkswagen, MAN trucks. So we do not only focus on warehouses and making them transparent, but on the entire supply chain, bringing our technology also on the trucks, on the street, everywhere in the world. So besides our strong network like uh, tech founders and tech stars, IoT New York, we really want to bring transparency in the um, entire industry with our standard. Be part of it. Thank you. Excellent stuff. Well done, Philip. All right, jury, off to you. Do you want to start?
Um, yeah, so no, just explain quickly to me, in order to establish a new standard in such a large industry, you, need, you rely um, on the fact that most of these players um, will use your um, technology. How do you want to achieve that? Mm -hmm. So first of all, um, we go into the warehouses. This is like the first use case we tackle. We, um, we go in the uh, process of um, picking all the way to the, uh, bringing it to the, to the uh, trucks. Um, so this is the first process. We already worked together with BMW on that, uh, also with SAP and so on. And then um, we have customers like uh, Volkswagen, so we can then step by step uh, bring out uh, technology to further customers. So right now, focus on automotive. Uh, we already talk with most of the German OEMs, um, and the future will be also to the, to the tier one and tier two suppliers. Perfect. Philip? Cool. Um, sounds super compelling what you're working on, mm -hmm. um, but also like the customers you're addressing, uh, looks like there's going to be like fairly long sales cycles. So yes. What are you guys doing to kind of like bring those down and like product and sales wise, for instance? So we try to make it as easy as possible for our customers. So first, the setup fee is very small. Um, the hardware is not as costly. And then in the end, they just have to pay as a data as a service um, monthly fee. And um, usually we do a first small pilot project to actually identify the use case to already um, give them the benefit uh, for, for that uh, running year. And then we can grow inside of our customers together with them. All right, quick question over here. Just a quick question. It, it's, it, it would sound like it is an intermediate or transitionary technology, as I would have thought, not being an expert, that you integrate l small chips into all small packages and that they would track, be tracked. Mm -hmm. So um, first, um, first part is in the, in the logistics area, you already have so many different load carriers that are standardized. So uh, they, they would not change everything at, at, uh, at one moment. But um, so that's why a system, our uh, active sensor unit can be attached to anything basically. But we already work together with one of the big suppliers of small load carriers. So then he can uh, make it possible that it can automatically be attached in his product. Super. All right. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you very much. Guys, let's put our hands together for Philip. Do you want to pass that to Anna? Anna, come on up right over here to the mark. Nyris is the name of your company. Yes. You got three minutes on the clock. Yes. And you got everyone's attention. Here we Thanks. go. Hi. Today, more than 85% of all cyberspace data are stored in pixels. And that's exactly what we do. We understand pixels and we find products and objects inside them. And we do it very fast. We do it in less than a second. So why is visual search so important or getting so important? Because our mind is able to process visual data 60 times faster than text. That's why visual communication is so much more efficient than text. So let me tell you a bit about what the secret of our technology is. There are so many image recognition startups out there. What's so special about us? What we do is not only train one neural, one neural network to make the case happen. We combine different technologies in one engine, classic one and modern one, because we very soon recognize that if you want to recognize all of our products out there in all those different situations, you need to do exactly that. So what happens now when we got an image request onto the, into, our, uh, into our cloud, we run it against all of those technologies in parallel. We score the results and combine them to one JSON response at the end. All of that in less than a second. And we optimize the entire process to three major KPIs. That is speed, scalability, and cost. What does it mean? <laughs> we can upload up to 50 new images per second. Out of those, 40% are already recognizable without any further training. We can search a database of up to 500 million products or objects and find the exact match in less than a second. And our costs are the way that we can price one request with one to maximum three cents. So let me show you how it works for our customers. 
we, show, we sell our software as SRS to retail and industry. And one of our industrial customers is Daimler. And what they love to do is just to point a smartphone towards the truck and get the specific information on that truck. So they point at the tire and get the specific information, information of the tire pressure of that truck. And there are several augmented reality startups who can do it. They can do it for 10, 20 or even 100 trucks, but they can't do it for 180,000 and that's exactly what we do. Our second customer is Miles and More, our one customer of the e-commerce part, and there we do the visual product search, so you just snap a product and you get it immediately and uh, without any typing, with, uh, without any search. So yeah, that's Nairus, and um, we are happy to be here. We are very uh, eager on new corporations, on new customers, so if you have an idea how to use our technology, please ping me. And as speed is our USP, I'm already finalist. Thanks. <laughs> Excellent. Super, super, super. Well done, Anna. Well done, well done. You can hold on to that. Jury, who's got a question first? Yes, Christopher. Um, so the use cases that you showed are quite different. Yeah. It's yeah. like, where do you see right now the most traction and like, where do you think will the most traction come from? Yeah, Good. I think that's industry. So I see most potential there and a lot of traction there at the moment. Nice. It Andreas. seems like you are up to fight with Google and the likes uh, because they are very strong in picture recognition. Yeah. Why would you win? Because Google loves us. Gus, are you here? So Gus from Google presented us on stage yesterday. Yeah, Gus is there. So he can explain to you directly why they love us. Um, but yeah, just to give you a short answer, um, Google is able to recognize the class of a product like a chair or whatever, but they don't provide a solution to a customer like a Daimler where you recognize the exact product of exact this truck. Hendrik? The biggest enemy of a good technology is the better technology. How can you be sure that someone comes up with an even faster, more scalable and cheaper solution tomorrow? Oh, I can't be sure about that. So we need to be fast. We need to you know, cooperate with all those bigger guys there. So we are in the Microsoft program. We are in the Google program. We are in the AWS. So we try to be always you know, ahead of the technology, but we can't be sure about that. Sure. Um, it seems rather complex as different customer segments you're going to approach um, yeah. on the sales cycle. How are you going to manage that one and how difficult is the onboarding? Yeah. So on the tech side, we're very focused on the sales side. You're fully right. Um, so at the moment, we are three. And, you know, one of us is doing uh, retail. One of us is doing industry. In the future, um, I, I don't really have a wholeness answer to that because we very much, we're very focused on the tech side to stay focused there. In the sales cycle at the moment, you know, I do sales for everybody, so that works. But <laughs> yeah, I was PCG for nine years. But uh, yeah, to be honest, I don't have the perfect answer for that. All right, yeah. Anna, thank you so much, guys. Can we give thank her a hand, please? <laughs> okay, so the final person who's going to be pitching to you. You guys ready for this? Stefan, Finn Compare, that's the name of your company. You got the jury, you got the audience. You ready? Three minutes on the yes. clock. The Thank time you. starts right now. Thank you. Today, for SMEs, finding and comparing financing solutions is extremely difficult. In Germany alone, there are over 2,000 banks, alternative lenders, and fintechs competing for B2B businesses out there. A lot of that market is still very offline. It's extremely fragmented. There's high pricing in transparency. There's extensive paperwork. So if you're trying to get different offers from different banks or different lenders, or even learn about these products, it's a very manual offline process, right? You have to apply with five different banks. You have to go there physically. You then have to compare these offers on your own. Um, and if you need that service desperately because you have a big order, for example, it's very often unreliable, right? You then don't have the time to actually go out and find the different solutions that are out there in the market. That's why we have built FinCompare. FinCompare is a platform that uh, so far has over 200 uh, lenders, fintechs, uh, and banks um, to compare uh, different offers. So we help SMEs find, compare, and close different financing offers across a range of different products. Most of these products are in the alternative space, but we also do credit, and the alternative products are factoring, leasing, fine trading, etc. So you've heard a lot of these fintechs probably in the past years present, um, and we now aggregate them and help SMEs to find the right offers in there. Now, 
a lot of this is actually an offline process today. So we had to cook in somehow the advisory services into our platform. So we also help SMEs with a human process if they don't know how to handle these um, larger tickets, for example, online. So our average tickets are around 500K, um, which is relatively large, obviously, for online. And we are scaling in both sides of our customer base on the smaller end as well as on the larger end. We have launched this year in February. Um, we are 25 people so far, um, and we have grown to over 500 million in financing volume last week. Um, that is requested volume of which we have closed um, over 20 million so far, which within a, such a short period of time is relatively short. Um, we have so far raised two and a half million in a seed round, um, and we are about to raise our Series A, and we want to start internationalize, um, starting with uh, Poland, Austria, Netherlands, and France. Um, very happy. Um, if you're looking for financing, come approach me. Uh, we are ha very happy to help you. If you're looking to invest, I'm also here. Please talk to me. Thanks so much. Excellent stuff. He didn't need three minutes. He just need two and a half minutes to tell his deal. That's good. All right, question. Go. On the financing side, I can imagine that all the fintechs are jumping on your platform because they're all looking for customers. But can you actually get sort of the traditional financiers to, to work with you? Yes. So we have uh, Co Commerzbank, Deutsche Bank, and most of the big branch banks in Germany. Um, the Sparkassen banks are obviously different because you have to close them individually. Um, but we have all the alternative lenders as well as banks. Yeah. Yep, so uh, some of the products are probably quite complicated and uh, you probably get like uh, commission through the leads that you generate. How do you make sure that your customers trust you and actually what you rank first in the, in the search? Yeah, it's a, it's a good point, right? So um, because we provide this manual service, like we provide like a connection to an advisor if you need one, um, a lot of customers trust that, right? That's the example from the insurances. Uh, like WeFox, they're doing something similar, also building like a three-sided market network. Um, and what we've seen in the insurance space, for example, there's always the insurance broker that you trust, right? You, you don't trust the others, but you trust your own. So we've got lots of questions, so quick answers, please, All Andreas. Right. Okay, now you mentioned a couple of times that you have manual intervention, um, and in addition, you have to plug in many different providers. How can you scale this efficiently? Yeah. Perfect. Um, so the fintechs, obviously, they integrate very fast. And with the banks, it takes a bit of time. But we, the banks don't even integrate at this point. So we have a dynamic funnel that just matches you to the right financing provider. Rob. You get some great data on your users, your, ba your companies. Will you start building your own financing products for them down the line? So far, we want to be an independent platform. So we don't want to provide our own financing. But we're obviously collecting that data to build out our own scoring algorithm to maybe in the future go down that route. One more question. Sorry for being a little provocative. In my eyes, it's just a new financing broker with the uh, differentiation that you integrate alternative funds or alternative sources. So uh, what hinders um, the next startup to do exactly the same uh, with the effect that margins will come down and it's going to be a crowded space? Or um, you don't get momentum and nobody would be interested? Um, I don't really understand the question, but I think for us the, the major... Is, What's, what's the sustainable advantage you have? Yeah, yeah I, I think the advantage is in the technology, right? At the end of the day, you have one access point for multiple financing solutions. So if you compare it to other industries, there's like a Stripe where you have one access point to multiple payment options, or there's a Twilio for phone, right, where you have one access point and you can offer multiple phone solutions in different countries. And through us, you have one access point and you can offer alternative financing solutions as well as traditional solutions through a process like our website, but also through an API. Fantastic. Stefan, take a seat. Thank Guys, can we give him a hand, please? Uh, Stefan, can I have the remote? You can keep the mic. Okay, we have got the biggest check on the stage to hand out. But first, Andreas, if you'll take your team and discuss, we need to come up with one winner. We've got some amazing prizes to give out. But the biggest check we're going to give out right now, because it's actually not one of these guys, it's somebody who's in the audience that is about to get a massive, massive prize. So the two co-MDs of ProSieben Sat1 is Jens and Stefan. Please come on up. Let's give them a hand, please. Thank you. ProSieben Sat1, did I get it? Very good. ProSieben Sat1 right? Accelerator. Excellent. Thank you for having us on stage. Um, while the jury is discussing who's going to win 
the overall price. We are here to give you a little bit of an overview of the Pro7 Sat1 accelerator because we will be giving out a special prize to one team that's in the audience in a couple of minutes. So, who are we? What do we do? We help startups get on TV. That's what we do. That's what differentiates us from any other accelerator in the world. So, we are the ones that help you reach a massive audience and present your product to the ones that you want to sell to. So what do we do? We offer 750,000 euros worth of TV advertising time. We offer dedicated mentoring and coaching with regards to television planning, to creatives, to um, media planning, to everything you need to do to be ready for the television screen. We have an office in Berlin that you can use, of course, and we do everything, all of this, um, in a convertible note structure, so no fixed valuation of the company, very fair setup uh, for the companies uh, we work with. So our investment focus is purely B2C, because that's, of course, the kinds of products and services that you can advertise for on TV best. Industries we typically invest in are e-commerce, food and beverages, beauty, entertainment, health, and fintech. So if you are in one of these industries, then we are more than keen to getting to know you. The minimum requirements for us to invest in a company are, of course, a certain kind of traction. Because if you are still very small, then it's very hard to advertise on TV and then be able to handle the demand that you generate. So therefore, you need to have a, you know, a minimum uh, traction and revenue. So typically, between half a million and two million euros in revenue is what we look at. And you need to have a product that is ready for the mass market. So not too niche, but you know, a product that most of the people in the German-speaking region would want to buy. We have a portfolio of about 40 companies. We've had five exits uh, since we started the Accelerator. We have more than 150 mentors we work with. And we take in less than 2% of the applications and companies we screen. And we're very proud that we have been uh, selected as one of the best accelerators by Capital Magazine, so uh, we're very glad that we obviously have done something right. So if you're interested, drop me an email, and we are more than happy to getting to know you. But now is the time to hand over to Stefan uh, for our big prize that we are going to give out. So thank Stefan. You. Thank you, Jens. Thank you a lot. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you that you left me actually the, the great part, which is giving out prizes. So what is our prize today here from the Prodeem Set 1 Accelerator? And it's actually the first time that we are giving it out. It's a TV budget of 250,000 euros, which can be used on the channels of the Prodeem Set 1 Group. <laughs> so it's a big prize, uh, and it's, it's basically the key to make your company a mass market success. And so therefore, we took also the liberty of selecting a company um, which, is, which is the right one for this prize. And so therefore, we didn't take one of the companies which I just presented. We went through all of the applications for bits and pretzels, and we uh, took a company which has a great mission. Its mission is basically to make brushing your teeth fun. And that company is Playbrush. <laughs> well, he's taking the long walk, so uh, that gives us more time to talk to you. Um, so most likely, you will see them on TV pretty soon, and then you will be able to buy the products and help your children or the ones that you know, or that your yeah. godfather or godmother of, uh, to brush their teeth and then uh, do something good for the, uh, for the world, essentially. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you very much. It's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. That's enough. So now have fun uh, carrying it home. So we're glad that we don't have to carry it anymore. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK. So can you guys still hear me? Is this mic on? Woo. OK. This is really stressful. 
not just uh, for the jury backstage, trying to make a decision from so many startups down to six, stressful for these guys up here because they've just given their pitch and uh, we've got some amazing, amazing prizes to give away. So we're going to talk about some of those prizes. But first up, um, I don't know how many of you are investors in the room, but it is a lot of work because it's not just coming here and asking questions that might be provocative, but it's years and years and years of experience. So if it's okay, I'd love if the jury can quickly come up over here. Jury, can you guys come up? Andreas, you come up too. Um, Fantastic, but uh, just stand right here. Can the jury just come up? Because I just think you guys deserve a hand. So can, can all the jury come up? Thank you so much. Just stand right here. Look all pretty. Just over here is good. Super, 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 super. OK, fantastic. Um, Andreas is the head of this jury. Um, and we've got a couple prizes. So in this golden envelope, he has got the name of the winner. But can we quickly go through the prizes? So who's going to help me with the trophy? Are you helping me with the trophy? Torsten, go grab that that prize, that trophy. So bring that over here. Woohoo, it's so exciting. I feel like Oprah. This is my Oprah moment. Yes, grab a mic. So you stand on that side. I will stand over here. So last year, I remember someone came and grabbed my hand and they said, actually, I, didn't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really know who you are, but you shook Richard Branson's hand. So I just want to shake your hand. Um, and that was right here on this stage. He's become a, a huge supporter of Bits and Pretzels. And yet again, for another year, the winner gets to travel to Necker Island to be part of the Extreme Tech Challenge 2018. So. <laughs> so somebody on this stage is going to win a whole lot of stuff, a trophy, a trip, some money, and all of that. And all that power right now is with Andreas. Andreas, come on up over here, please. And in So your does time. it work? Yes. You know, we were thinking, who needs a bit more tent huh? to decide who goes to this great place? Um, first of all, I would like to state that this year, the quality uh, was very, very good. And we had a hard time in deciding. Um, so we had a tough decision. We had two minutes only, so we couldn't really discuss it to the end. Um, and we have. We are very indecided, indecided, undecided between the two ladies. But in the end, only one could make it, and we, de we decided for Franzi of Catches. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, grab that. I'm flying. I'm not going to give this away. Thank you so much. OK, so what's about to happen, just so you know, is you're about to witness an amazing cleanup of this stage. And then you're about to witness a live cyber attack simulation. So if you're curious as a startup what the potential of a cyber attack is, you're going to hear it. And the CIA are in the building. I told you that in the morning. So monitor your phones. They're in the building. Um, we're going to talk to them, but yes, all these guys are going to clear off the stage. We're going to clear the stage. The music is going to play, but please do invite your friends. It is the closing keynote of this amazing Bits and Pretzels conference. I'm still holding the check. I can't believe it. Not the check, the prize. Um, <laughs> I keep sponsoring it. Um, but yes, so we're going to clean up, stick around. We've got a lovely keynote, a live cybersecurity attack right here in this building simulation. Oh, here we go. Photo time. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. All right.